Welcome to the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the kind sponsorship from NoiseAware. NoiseAware is an easy-to-use preventative noise monitoring solution that is wire-free and completely weatherproof with the option of interior and exterior sensors. And when you make your purchase from NoiseAware, use the promotional code VRFORMULA to receive 20% off. Again, that's VRFORMULA. Let's get started. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. You've probably experienced upselling in the past. You know, when you buy something or you see something on a website and you go to buy it and it's $37 and you press the buy now button and then up pops another offer for you. That's almost as irresistible as the first one was. That's called upselling. So today we are talking about what else you can sell, what you can upsell to your guests to increase your bottom line just that little bit more. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. We've moved into March. The first day of spring has passed. That's if you go for meteorological spring, which is March the 1st, and not ast- uh, astrological spring, which I think is March the 21st. But you know, looking out of my window, you would not think that spring has sprung. We've had so much snow the past couple of weeks that it's probably going to take till June before it all goes. But you know, the temperature's on the up. I'm feel, everybody seems to be feeling that little bit more optimistic now. So many more people I know have had their COVID vaccinations. They are feeling optimistic. We're almost thinking about, no, not getting back to normal, but actually being able to do things that maybe a year ago we didn't think were possible. I was talking to Mike just recently about going to the VRMA conference in San Antonio in October. And quite honestly, I see no reason why not. And then, of course, there's a Vacation Rental Women's Conference coming up in December, which I know Amy Highnote is really busy preparing for that. And that is going to be pretty much pretty outstanding. So I'm hoping that I'm going to get to both of those and perhaps others. I I don't know. So, yeah, there's some optimism out there. Today's guest on the podcast is a great friend of mine. And you have heard her many times before, and that's Tyanne Marsink. Tyanne has joined me on multiple occasions because she can talk on so many different aspects of this industry. Tyanne has, uh, she, she builds houses, she builds monster houses. And by monster houses, I mean houses that can accommodate 36 people in Branson, Missouri. She also manages properties on behalf of others. And she is so well known in this industry for her expertise with the guest experience. And I've spoken alongside Tyanne, as well as Andy McNulty, on a couple of stages in the past where we've talked about the guest experience. And I so admire Tyanne for her expertise and her experience in this business. So when I saw that Tyanne was doing some upselling on her website about Branson, I wanted to find out what this was all about because I've often said in the past that if you have one property or if you have a couple of properties, your income is pretty much finite. Once you've sold all your available weeks, there's nothing else to sell. But in fact, there is. There is so much more. You can sell concierge services. You can sell early check-ins or late checkouts. You can offer grocery supply services. I know some people who have artwork from local artists and they sell on commission. So there are a lot of different opportunities. So I wanted to take my opportunity to talk to Tyanne and find out a little bit more, not just about 
what to sell, but how to do it. You know, the mechanics behind it, how how you collect the extra money rather than just asking them to leave cash on the sideboard. So without further ado, let's move on over to my lovely interview with Tyan Marsink. I am super delighted to have with me today my friend Tyan Marsink from everywhere, really, from Branson retreats, from vacation homes in Branson, from Touch Day. You can add on all the other things. Perhaps correct me on the ones I got wrong, Tyan. <laughs> Branson family retreats and then Missouri house vacation rental homes. Touch day. There's other things. That's other Those things, ones. actually. You follow follow Diane on Facebook, and she's got. You know, we have all this long list of stuff down the side of the page. <laughs> well, most of us have one or two. You have the long list of stuff, and you founded so many different companies. And I, I am, I just admire you so much. You have more hours in the day than anybody I know. But the thing is, is that you use them. You use those hours so productively. So let's catch up. We've spoke, oh, probably a year ago here on the podcast, maybe less. What have you been up to since then? Are you building any more more houses? Uh, have you taken on any more? What? Where are you? What's going on? Well, um, we were building that big 10-bedroom house, and that finally got finished, um, and we opened in June. So the, the COVID crisis actually hit at the perfect point for us because it was just getting finished up and it gave us a slow two months to get things set up. So we actually drove back and forth every week between home and Branson um, with the kids and the kids didn't have school. So we didn't have to worry about school schedules. And we basically lived with my parents down in Branson because they were they had built four houses. <laughs> my mom's crazier than I am. So they were setting up four houses. We were setting up one house and living together in a 10 bedroom house that was already done. So we, we had our own spaces and it just worked out so well. And uh, guests started coming in June and that was awesome. And I thought, okay, we're not, we're not doing it anymore. No. <laughs> well, you know, you know how things change. I ended up building something at least once a year. So we put, we had decided to sell two of our houses and build two new houses. Well, the whole 1031 thing and COVID screwed that completely. We missed our 1031 deadlines and we had ended up, it was like a chess game trying to move pieces and dates and things like that. So in the end, we turned two lots into one better lot and we're building this fantastic six bedroom house with private indoor pool doing a total industrial castle look with swords on the wall. So we're going very edgy this time. That sounds, that sounds completely amazing. And no doubt you're got, you are um, following the entire build with video and audio so that you can tell everybody how you do it. I'm sure that will be coming. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> And then in the meantime, we have people coming to us to manage for them. So we have, um, we took on a new four bedroom that was just built and then they're building a nine bedroom. So we're you know consulting on that to make sure everything fits our brand. And it's just absolutely wonderful couple we're working with. And then in the midst of that, we get Facebook message saying, Hey, um, we've been hosting for two years, the door next, the house next door to us, we're done. Can you guys take it over? And I walk in and this place is just fabulous. It's one of the ones I've been eyeing. It's one of my competition places. <laughs> and I'm like, all we had to do was put in new linens and towels. They had already rehabbed the entire place. It's a historic home, clawfoot tub, everything. And so that's been phenomenal as well, taking that on. But as our properties have grown and everything, we've, we've now have this reputation and we were approached by Villas of Distinction with World Trade Holdings. And they were needing to expand their market stateside and they found us. And what's really interesting and something that I'd like listeners to think about is the way they found us was a referral from the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. So because we were Chamber of Commerce members, the Chamber of Commerce said, oh, you wanna know the best in the neighborhoods? Well, here, talk to these companies and we were on their list. So that was awesome. You've talked before when we've had these discussions about the, the importance of joining the local establishments like the Chamber of Commerce, like the tourism authorities, 
and and the benefits that you got from that because I I always thought that was such a great tip that you gave. So that one has paid off now. It has, and there's I'll be talking more about Chamber of Commerce when we get to the upsell part too. Yeah. So talking about that, we yeah. are discussing upselling. One of the reasons I wanted to do this is that on the Touch State Rockstars Facebook group. There was a post, somebody somebody posted, maybe it was you, posting about upselling, but also, you know, selling other things on your website and using TouchStay to promote them and using something called JotForm. And I didn't quite understand. And I wanted to talk to you about this whole idea of upselling, because basically I, I remember talking to people years ago, you know, you've got one property you've got a finite amount of income because you you can't manufacture more weeks. You can't manufacture more nights to rent. So once you've rented everything, that's it. There is no more. Well, there is. You can upsell. That, that's one way of talking about it because when I think of upselling, I'm thinking about selling other services and we'll come to this sort of check in and check out and additional cleaning, et cetera. But of course, there's other ways of making additional income off your business. So that's the basis of this discussion. So you're up for this? I am. We've gotten a lot of partnerships going in the past few months. We have not um, stayed still <laughs> during COVID. It's, it's been incredible. But JotForm, okay, so... Let's start with why. Why, okay. should, and I've said it sort of briefly, why should we sell services? What What's your take on that? I mean, I know from my perspective is that you know, there's a lot of pressure on margins these days because, you know, we, we we are out there looking for new owners for our management company, yet Airbnb is out there saying, you don't need a management company, you do it yourself. And then we have a lot of competitors who are hungry. They're also eager to take on these owners. So, you know, commission rates are dropping. There is almost a fight to the bottom on commission, which I absolutely hate, and I will not enter that fight. So there's got to be there's got to be something else. Now these margins are getting tighter. Right. So what we did is we looked at what questions our guests were asking us. And they were asking us a lot about grocery services, Mm -hmm. but where they could get groceries at. And as we know, when you go to a vacation land, as my husband and I call vacation areas, you do not want to fight the grocery store Mm -hmm. in vacation land on on arrival day. Or departure day. I mean, just the fact of traffic on the roads alone, but then you have to go to the grocery store. That is the most horrific experience during vacation ever. And we were getting more and more questions of, okay, what do we do about groceries? Where's the closest grocery store? You know, we plan to get groceries on our way into town. Can we get there early and drop them off and then go do something? And we realized, you know, this is the perfect, you know, pain point that we can solve. So we had to figure out the logistics of it. But now, um, because of COVID, most of the grocery stores have a pickup service. So we have our guests. They can go online, place their order. They do their shopping, their payment, everything. Put our name down as the pickup person. And so then we have a team member go pick it up and then bring it to the property and put it in the kitchen and fridge. And then we charge a service fee for that part only. So we don't have to worry about if a grocery item is out or actually walk the grocery store halls, you know, all we have to do is go pick it up and deliver it. And then guests, as soon as they arrive, they're happy. They can pop open their soda and water and go down the slide off the back deck. (laughs) Yes. Let's not forget the slide off the back deck. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, it's, I think it's, it started out as solving pain points, you know, making our guests happy, figuring out what they need because they're not going to purchase things that, you know, they don't need mm-hmm. or they don't feel they need. I mean, yeah, we purchase things all the time that we don't need, but the feeling that, yeah, we need this taken care of for us. We're willing to pay it. And mm-hmm. as soon as we instituted, we found, especially during high season, almost every single guest said, yes, we raise our hand that we'll, we'll give you $40 and you go take care of this. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think, you know, when, when you factor in that the entire cost of a vacation, then a few extra dollars in saving vacation time. And I think that that's the way to get it across, isn't it? You know, yes. what's the value 
of that time that you're going to spend in the supermarket lineup. And particularly now during COVID when, you know, I don't know what it's like down there. Grocery shopping here is still a real, it's, it's a hardship. We, we still have lineups outside every grocery store. Wow. Um, Cause they're only letting certain amounts of people in. So, so yes, what a great service that is. And, and I can understand just about everybody buying into it. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing we thought about is, what are experiences that the local businesses have been trying to get out and trying to reach, but they don't have a way to? So we were talking to um, a, a distillery that's it's an award-winning distillery in Missouri, but they don't have a showroom. They don't have a tasting room. So Edelbrand Distillery is full on Swiss spirits and it's amazing, but you it's private events only. Mm-hmm. And she only goes to places. So we had actually partnered together for a nonprofit benefit. And from that, we decided, you know, there's something else we can offer here. So we put together a package for our guests that my guests could go purchase from her since she has the alcohol license and she can drop off the things for a virtual tasting if, if they want her to guide it um, or they, she can just leave instructions if they want a charcuterie board to go with it or if they even even want to do an entire immersive Swiss fondue experience mm. with her and her Swiss husband. That is fantastic. And we're going to come on in a minute to talking about, you know, how you create those partnerships. But let's let's just add in another few things that could be sold, that could bring some extra income. And I know there's things, and I've seen a lot of people saying, well, you know, we charge $25 or $50 for an early check-in or a late check-out. So that's something else. And something that is um, that we're thinking of doing this year, once we figure out the things I'm going to talk to you about, <laughs> is um, equipment rental. We have a lot of people who come to our properties and they want to, they want to rent additional watercraft, maybe a kayak, maybe even a motorboat. And there are outlets. Now, they can go directly to them if they want and sideliners all together, but they often ask us, you know, where do we go? How do we do this? So my thought is, well, you know, this is where these partnerships come in and we can arrange this for them, maybe have the kayak ready or the stand up paddleboard already there and somehow come to an arrangement with that outlet. Baby equipment is another thing, of course. Um, Absolutely. You know, our, and the bike rental we actually used a couple of weeks ago when we went to Key West. Oh, yeah. All we had to do was we, we told our host, we said, yes, we went two bikes. And the next morning they magically appeared right there, ready to go. Um, it was great. And, you know, it's something we've been looking at too to add to our properties on the bike trail. And the problem right now we have is there's just our bike shop can't get bikes yes. that we need. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's a slight problem at the moment. Um, but yeah, and, and baby equipment that, you know, if someone isn't going to um, provide that um, as part of their property, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Especially as what, what, that's how we started when we had little kids and l- lugging all of that equipment on vacation. Yeah, it, it takes up all your space. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm in two minds about the uh, supplying the baby equipment. Um, speaking too much with Justin Ford about, about life. Yes, you got to be careful of that. Yes. <laughs> but, but that's certainly another area. Now, another, another area is something that I've seen on your website is that you're now selling swag as well. I am. Yes. Tell us about that. Yeah. So we realized we're the type of people who want some little souvenir, but we're also very practical. So we searched for items that are practical and help people to remember those warm fuzzies of when they visited or an anticipation of visiting. Uh, What was really cool is about uh, two months ago, after we just started this, we had a guest book and then she went on and she bought one of every single piece of swag. (laughs) (laughs) Like score. I mean, that just added $80 to that stay. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's fun. And then it's, we got items that we also felt we could give away if we wanted to give away or, you know, my thing is I just want to cover costs, honestly, because we look at it as a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. And with our big houses, the lake houses, we decided we did a dry bag. 
you know, and actually I have my items next mm-hmm. to me. If anybody's watching this on YouTube, we have a dry bag with our logo. We did uh, camping cups, um, camping mugs. We did a dog food bowl, a dog bowl. Love the dog bowls. <laughs> uh-huh. Because we, you know, being dog friendly. And this one I want to add to our inventory, um, but we picked this up on one of our travels, is a deck of cards. Okay. Okay. So having that branded as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, everybody has to have a deck of cards. Yes, you know. exactly. So this is the one I actually carry in my purse all the time now. And then of course, beanies, but this one is one I picked up in our travels in Seabrook, Seabrook, Washington. So we did that. And then those, the pottery mugs, this is one I picked up on another travels and um, the custom uh, our custom logo and mm-hmm. colors and shapes and everything. And then the other thing um, we've been, we've, we've done is we've partnered with a coffee house, a local coffee house, and we do small mini packs of coffee that are branded. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to start actually selling our own blend of coffee as well to folks. Wow. And how's it going? We've only had the one sale (laughs) so far. (laughs) I forgot we had window clings too. Um, (laughs) But we, we also started right before Christmas. So I, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, and it's off season right now. So I don't expect anything at all. And this is totally a test yeah. type of thing. Um, and, and my purpose is to increase the, the, the quotient of happiness mm-hmm. or the happiness quotient. That's, you know, it's, it's not to make a ton of money off the swag per se, yeah. but we, we want it to be practical things. And that's why we chose things like the dry bag for the lake house, the um, dog food bowl for the places by Prina farms, things that will, when people look at it, they remember their happy Mm -hmm. times. Yeah. I think, I think that is, it's just such a great idea. So to just tell me, do you have a big closet where you've got all your stock piled up or are you, are you buying (laughs) these piece by piece? We, to get it a decent price, we did buy um, wholesale, um, the quantities, it might be 50 or it might be 90, you yeah. know, something like that. The dog food bowls was 240, a little outrageous, but you know, at like two bucks a piece, that's okay. But if you're going to um, give them away, if at some point, you know, you, you can give them right. to a guest, they're going to take exactly. them home. Somebody's going to mention it. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not too worried about it. So right now, yes, the boxes are stacked up. Um, currently in the place of my dining, my breakfast table, but that's another story. (laughs) Um, No breakfast table, but there's boxes. Um, But it will eventually, um, you know, go other places, storage. But anyway, Um, but yeah, it's, it's something we're trying, you know, if if we were to look at numbers only, it it probably doesn't make the most business sense if we're just running numbers. Yeah. But that's, that's not our, not mm-hmm. our purpose, you know, if yeah. it increases the happiness and the reviews and the word of mouth referrals and the happy memories, and then people want to come back to me, that's more important than making an extra five bucks off of every stay. Oh yes. And I, and I think that's a really important thing to do when you're talking upselling, it's not necessarily upselling with the monetary goal in mind. There's, there's a, a, a marketing goal in mind. Um, right exactly just moving those it's moving that brand around and getting it dispersed uh, yes I love that so w- when you th- with these with with this with the swag where do you get it from are you getting it from one place or, or are you going around and about and choosing different suppliers so we used um, just one supplier and she is a woman owned local business here in town and she's got all the connections mm-hmm. to the, the the producers yeah um and so if you look around you probably find a local person to you that does the same thing um, happy to share my gal she's most amazing customer service as well uh, ps enterprises so if anybody wants to talk to sandy you're welcome to and um but there are so many businesses that do similar to mm-hmm. what she does um type thing so definitely look local as yeah, well. I love I love the fact that you do that. You do a lot of sharing with with your local community and local businesses. And I think that's something that everybody should do right across the board here. OK, so you've got your services to sell. How do you collect the money? How, how do you get an order and process an order into a payment? 
in the easiest possible way rather than them leaving a piece of paper and saying, you know, you can get this service <laughs> and leave me some cash. Right. So th- we've done a few different things. Um, the grocery services, what they, what we've got it set up is they just text us and let us know they want to do it because they got to send a screenshot of their order. And then I bill it to their card on file right along with the reservation and our reservation management system. Um, I've had a situation where there was a group of folks and one gal couldn't make it. So she wanted us to pick up a bottle of wine and a, some flowers and a note. And so she just Venmoed us the money and we took care of that for her. Mm-hmm. Then the, um, but the main thing we do, especially for the swag is we have a, what's called jot form and we have the free version. So, you know, you guys don't think you have to spend money on this either, but it's brilliant you can put together a grid of products and then you can connect it to pretty much whatever payment processor you want. So that was one of the key things too, for me is I, because of the accounting background of all that has to go on, I'm like, I don't want yet another piece of accounting to to Mm -hmm. take care of. So I was able to hook it up to my regular credit card processor. So all the money flows into the exact same account and everything and job form, sends you an email you can customize the email to the client the guest you can and everything so it works very well Um, because of my e-commerce background for the past 15 years i'm already set up for shipping if i need to do shipping Um, again local i've got local box maker here in town so hooked up with them giant thing of bubble wrap for 25 bucks it's incredible and then in the U.S., the post office gives you priority mailboxes for free. Mm-hmm. So there's there's all kinds of different little tricks that you can do uh, for shipping. And you just nowadays print it off on a regular piece of paper, tape it on and drop yeah. it off and you're good to go. Yes. Yeah. That's something that, um, you know, I, I have not investigated with Canada Post. I haven't investigated much with Canada Post for, for a very long time, actually. Um, I like the idea that there is something out there that can sort of automate that process in in some degree uh, for you. So let's go on to the alternatives. You know, on your website, you have discounts with a show in Branson. And and I think there's, there's two. And, and, and there's that great place that does the zip lining and... Uh-huh. Yep. So say, I, I, what caught my eye was grandma soaring through the air on a zip line. And now you're a grandma too, you know. <laughs> I, I am. And we could actually say a great grandma because my mom was on the zip line. <laughs> yes. So that that is a 20% discount. But, um, you know, I, I saw mm-hmm. this, you, you have a, and it's a lovely way of selling it. Get this 20%, give the secret code. It, it makes people feel that they've got something that somebody else hasn't got. Um, so how do you organize that? Now that of course is, is one way of giving to guests. That's a marketing, uh, that's, that's attention to marketing rather than getting a commission. If somebody buys a service now, could you sort of explore that distinction a little bit? Absolutely. Because both of those that you saw on my website, one is each way. So the Fritz's adventure in Branson, that was a hookup because of the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. The Chamber of Commerce said, you know, hey, Tyan, it's great to meet you. Wow, we love your stuff. By the way, do you know Fritz's Adventure? I'm like, yeah, we love them. Oh, but have you met their marketing person? No, I haven't. Let me introduce you. So Avery and I got to talking and we found so many similarities as far as even the mission and goal of the companies. And Fritz's is very much like us. We're very controlling of our brand and our image. And they don't do the normal marketing um, rack cards and pamphlets and things like that. And they don't do Groupons. They don't do discounts, you know, nothing. Mm-hmm. But we set up um, in a partnership where our guests get the absolute best price than anyone else. And there's only one way to get it. And since this is a test, you know, it's a little bit more manual than just going online and putting a code in. Um, but I think is really cool is our mission is, is being families and we donate a dollar a night to CASA, the Quarter Point Special Advocates for Foster Kids. Come to find out Fritz's Adventure, they give free admission for any foster or adopted kid. And so just finding out that our missions are mm-hmm. very closely aligned made this even better. But it was just simply talking to them. 
Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about these third party partnerships then. How, and you, and you, this one method that you have is to join the chamber. That's where you find other businesses, not, mm-hmm. not altogether like yours, different businesses, but those businesses that you could have a relationship with. Are there other ways of connecting? So well, the other thing I did a few years ago is I looked at all the sites that sold the shows and attraction tickets in the area. And I looked for one that I felt that the one that I bought through myself before. So I felt it would be a good experience for my guest and then look to see if they had an affiliate program Mm -hmm. and they did. So it was very simple to just sign up for the affiliate program, get my links, and then I can slip those into my touch day guidebook and on my website and in my emails. Um, So I get a very small commission off of those. It's it's not, not much at all. But the other thing I did is um, you know, and I am a remote host. So everybody who's thinking, oh, well, you're not local. You're not local. Well, we, we are a remote host. We live over three hours away. Um, we're, we found it's just, it takes a concerted effort when something's important to you, you do it. And so we try and do as much business research as possible. And in, in the hospitality industry, that's quite fun. <laughs> and um, I thought, you know, we haven't seen this show called The Hay Goods. And the Hay Goods say they're the number one show in Branson. And I'm like, okay, it's about time we go see this to really see if their advertising is true, because then we can, you know, recommend to our guests. And so I thought, you know, what? I'm going to go step further and I'm going to see if they are open to talking to us directly and see if there's some type of partnership we can do. Well, they had never even considered the fact that vacation rentals were bringing in a massive amount mm-hmm. of people. It just never occurred to them. So we we went to the show. They actually comped us tickets to come see, put us front and center, best seats in the house. Afterwards, we had a conversation with the marketing director, who's actually the older brother who leads the show. And I can tell you, this show is phenomenal. Absolutely. I mean, when people say Branson is family Vegas, this is a Vegas show, easily. I mean, when the opening bit is a guy playing a guitar upside down on a zip line, coming in with <laughs> laser lights going on. That, yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty. That sounds pretty spectacular. I've been to Branson once, but we never saw a show. Yeah, there's some excellent shows. So we we thought, okay, we'll just do a thing of where I was like, I want serendipity for my guests. I'm not necessarily looking for extra money. I went serendipity. So we said, okay, when my guests come, they're going to go buy tickets. They're going to let me know. And then I'll let the show know that they're coming. And the, the guests can say, Banjo Boy said we could, could see him afterwards. Ban- let Banjo Boy know we're here. And then afterwards, he would do a meet and greet. Um, with them. But then we realized, okay, that's a little too much work. (laughs) And they were able to figure out, um, they gave us a discount code and our guests get absolute best price than anyone else. And then we get a commission off of that too. And I decided, you know, our commission is only a little bit and my guests get a lot Mm -hmm. because we could have split that amount any which way, but I chose, and he's like, what, you're not going to take much. I'm like, no, this, the, the thing is, is that we're giving something special to our guests. We're giving them that, that in type thing. Mm-hmm. That's more valuable to me than making an extra five bucks. What I, what I like the most is the way that you use, and I, you might, may have noticed, I, I downloaded your, one of your guides today because I wanted to check it out. I wanted to check out how you do it, which of course is, is just amazing. And I'm going to steal some of it. Or all of it. <laughs> but I love how you're using the Touch Day Guide as a promotional tool. When people think of a digital guide, it's just simply something you give to your guests and it tells, tells them what the Wi-Fi code is. You know, the Touch Day Guide used in that way is just takes it to another level. I have to mention Touch Day. I love it. All our guests get a Touch Day Guide. My owners get a manual. Um, oh, just, yeah, that's, that's just as an aside. What we're doing with our owner manual now is we do a, a, a monthly newsletter for our owners. They were not reading it when they were getting it as an email. We know they weren't reading it. And even if they, cl- if they were clicking on a PDF, they weren't doing that. So now we send them an email and we say, here's what's in your newsletter this month. And we make sure that the titles are 
unmissable. You know, today was, do you need to be charging, you know, or do you need to register for HST, which is our, our sales tax? When you get to a certain threshold, you have to register for HST. That, they're going to, you know, it's clickbait. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Our emails are now clickbait, and all our owners are now going to their touch date owner manual and where we've laid out every month's newsletter. And that, yeah, it's, it's just... I think it's brilliant. It is. <laughs> that's, a, that's a complete segue out of what we were talking about. But to, you <laughs> so, know, just talking about touch day and how to use the guides because you're using right. them brilliantly. Thank you. Well, but back to the communication part. So what the underlying communication to my guest includes, I've got a drip email from the time they book to the time they arrive. And you can see that on on my uh, website, my personal website, tianmarsink.com. On my blog, yeah, it's a massive amount of communications, but it's also tailored exactly to my guests. So, you know, not everybody has the same type of guests I have, but one of those is solely about show tickets and attractions. And we call out those two partnerships right away in that. And my wording is a little more cheeky. It's very friendly. It's not business at all. And I actually stole a lot of it from the one that Andy wrote over on the Touch Day blog. Mm-hmm. So if anybody who's listening is not um, is not registered on the on Touch Day, well, you can still go to the Touch Day blog and read um, the articles there because these guys know everything about what we call the, I stole it from Andy, tumbleweed time between the time that guests book and the time that they, they stay, which for many when any owners and managers, and myself included, for many, many years, it was a tumbleweed time. You just stood there and waited. Nothing happened. The occasional bit of tumbleweed went past. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but, yeah, I, but the actual communication is so important between that time, you know, th- those two times. And I love building excitement up. Yeah. And, you know, with sending a card ahead of time, sending these emails, giving them these tips. You know, the emails are very focused on specific tips for our area because every vacation land has its tips and Mm -hmm. and, and doing those insider tips, you just make your guests feel special and you increase the happiness quotient. Yeah, exactly. Let's go back to upselling for a little bit. Yep. Um, Really, you also sell gift certificates how does that work we 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 sort of played with it a year or so back haven't haven't done it again can you tell us what your thoughts are behind the idea of of offering gift certificates do do you think they work yeah so my my thing is like we said in the beginning i I listen to what guests ask for and that's what we base a lot of things off of if a guest is asking for it then that means there is probably a need for it Um, that's how i grew my um, children's room decor line That's completely based off of what mom said. We want this for our kids' rooms. And so when we had guests asking about gift certificates, we looked at, okay, so this is something we need to do um, because the gift of time is so important. I mean, that's actually what I do for my kids and we do for Nat's kids now. And more and more people are realizing that they want to do the gift of time. So we figured out, okay, what is a decent amount for a stay, you know, average stay, and then made it into different um, Mm -hmm. amounts like that. And then as far as if they want something physical, we can send them a physical card. Um, But logistically, it's something we said, okay, you need to have the person send in a, you know, an inquiry with their dates, then we can adjust it from there and apply their, their Mm -hmm. payment. Um, so it's a little bit of a manual process, but we've only sold a handful. So it's not that big a deal. I know there are gift card companies that you can hook up with and it makes the process you know, a lot easier. So you just got to figure out what works best for you. I think, you know, you always talk very wisely and just about everything I hear from you is, is sort of going in up here in my head and, and I will use it at some point in the future. <laughs> But I think the one thing that comes across, Tyann, is always, you, and you've said it a few times, is listening to what your guests want. You know, it's all very well and good having a brainstorming session and coming up with a hundred different things, marketing ideas, but so much better to 
listen to what they want. And I, I know for, from us, we, we hear from guests all the time, we want a motorboat. We want to get out on the water on a motorboat. Do, do the properties come with motorboats? Well, no, they don't because you know, 140 waterfront properties, that would be a lot of liability to cover. So actually working with local rental outlets is is going to be something that we will do probably not this year because everything is booked all our properties are booked all the boats are booked <laughs> nothing is available oh, i was going to say if the boats aren't booked yet that's a total upsell since you've already booked your time yeah, yeah we we we're talking to we're talking to some of these places and they said no oh, yo everything's booked <laughs> and they can't buy more boats because nobody's they're not making the darn things right Right. So that, yeah, there's such a knock-on effect, isn't there, from, from all It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, I mean, one of the things we would love to be able to give our guests would be a boat slip for them to bring their boats yeah. to. But it's at Table Rock Lake. It's so tightly controlled, and it's for a reason. It's for environmental reasons, which is just fine. But um, getting people to understand that is a thing. So we're very much, if you're bringing a boat, you reserve your boat slip at the local marina, mm-hmm. ASAP, especially this year. Yes. Yeah, this year. I'm, I'm, sh- I'm assuming for, for you it's the same. It's, it's just mm-hmm. a very odd. 2021 is going to be as crazy as 2020 was. Absolutely. So that is that is fantastic, Tyann. What a lot of really useful information. Thank you so much for coming along and joining me. Is there any news on your special conference that you've been doing for the past three years? Do you want do you want to talk a little bit about that and let people know if that's you know what's happening this year and possibly? <laughs> oh, so VR mastered. Um, we do not have any plans for 2021. I know Alana's working on something. I can't let the cat out of the bag on that. And I've got something on the side going on too, but we've really decided that VR Mastered is best in person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have asked us, you know, will you do something virtual? It's like, no, it's best in person. So it won't be happening for 2021. Um, We're hoping 2022, but we want to be making wise decisions on Mm -hmm. when we put money down on a location type thing. So um, stay tuned. It'll, it'll come back. We just want to do it safely and wisely. Well, I, I know people have asked me about, you know, will there be virtual? Will, will there be something virtual? And I, and I think you're wise. I've been to some virtual events and I've registered for a lot and not attended. I think a lot of people have been doing the same thing. You get very motivated and then it's just, oh, you know, I could be doing something else because I'm sat on my couch right now. <laughs> I mean, there are, there's a lot of great ones. And what's, what's awesome is there's so much virtual education coming out right now. So, you know, you don't want to get overloaded on what's going on, but, you know, be, be choosy, you know, find, find a subject you want to learn this month and then go after that without being overwhelmed. Lots of free webinars, low cost ones, all kinds of information out there available. Yeah, I know. I, I looked back the other day on all the things I bought back in April of last year. The yoga, the flexibility <laughs> training and strength training, how to beat procrastination. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I call myself a recovering procrastinator. Oh. Or a recovering perfectionist, mainly. I'm a procrastinator who's a recovering perfectionist. Yeah, I think I'm I'm very similar, but I'm not recovering yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so if, yes procrastinator i am going to follow the course on how to deal with procrastination at some point <laughs> oh something that maybe your listeners would be interested in coming up um the association of lodging professionals mm-hmm. alp um they brought me on as a board member this past fall and that is to help bring their um, organization more towards the short-term rentals um, and the holiday homeowners. So not, not necessarily the big property managers, because Burma has that covered, but that group of people who don't have that education type thing. Mm-hmm. And this is a decades, decades old organization with a new name, and they've got tons of information and education already that's been put together. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. 
Well, we'll watch out for that. And I'll make sure everything that, you know, we talked about and links to your site, etc., are all on the show notes so everybody can take a look. Of course, Touch Day is a member of our virtual vendor showcase um, where you can go and you can hear Andy McNulty talking to one of his or one of Touch Day's uh, very satisfied customers. That's Andy Medic from Sea Change Vacation Rentals. <laughs> Um, that's a great conversation. So, you know, if you want to know more about Touch Day, Tyann is definitely the person to uh, to go to. Okay, Tyann, I'm sure you're super, super busy with building and frozen pipes, which I gather is an <laughs> issue yep, and at I the moment. Teenage boys that just got home from school, so I need to go hug them. Oh, yes. My, you know, my my teenage boy turned 40 last week. Yes. <laughs> you Yes, hug them because those years go far too quickly yes absolutely yeah. agree if they'll let me hug them at that age <laughs> we'll talk again very very soon thanks so much for joining me thank you well thank you tyann that was really really special i just realized in fact that when i introduced tyann i introduced her as tyann marsink and not tyann marsink hammond so sorry, Nat, Tyann's husband, for forgetting to include Tyann's married name in the introduction. But most people, you know, I've known her for a long time as Tyann Marsink and so forgot to add the Hammond on, but there you are. Remembered it now. I just want to say a quick word about Noise Aware because we have been absolutely honoured to have Noise Aware sponsor the podcast for the past 10 weeks. It's been an absolute pleasure. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to Michael Goldin and to bring you all those questions that people have asked about Noise Aware. Now, if you haven't heard all those questions, we are putting them together in one full episode and we'll be publishing that over the next couple of weeks as a bonus episode. So you'll be able to go and listen to every question that was asked about Noise Aware. I am talking to many of um, our owners at our properties about installing the device in their cottages. Uh, Not so much for the indoor noise, but the outdoor noise, because we've got so many issues going on at the moment with complaints from neighbours about the noise that guests are making outside in our very quiet and tranquil cottage country areas. So I'm thinking that the in my recommendation of noise aware to them will allow them to install these devices and reduce some of these neighbor complaints so that's that's just one of the issues that noise aware is a solution for so as mike mentioned right at the very beginning we do have a discount code 20% discount code so if you want to take advantage of that just go to the show notes you'll be able to click on that and claim your 20% so don't forget to do that if uh, if you're going to go ahead and buy the Noise Aware product. So I'm now heading off to think about some upselling, <laughs> some things that we can sell alongside our rentals. And certainly the, the, the I love the idea of grocery supplies, particularly to our international guests, because when our international guests come in, they come in from you know a wide range of countries. That That's at the time in the future when international guests will be able to travel again. But quite often they get in late, they get in at four or five o'clock in the afternoon and then they have to hit the highway and the highway around Toronto airport is pretty dire at that time. And if we can take away one of the issues they're facing is, okay, so I've just had an eight hour flight from England and now I'm going to have to shop somewhere. If we can offer that to our international guests and say, okay, let's, we'll, you just give us the list and we'll go out and buy your groceries for you. So it's all ready for you. The big cold beer in the fridge and cold water and wine and some nibbles and whatever you want for your evening meal when you arrive, maybe some sausages or some burgers for the barbecue. That is going to take a, a big chunk of worry away from them when they arrive and, and need to do some shopping. So, I'm going to bring that up with my team and see how we can do that logistically and and make it work. I'll bring that back to you and let you know how that goes. So that's it from me for another week. Always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, I am working on a number of 
podcast episodes for the next month or two. If there is anybody you'd really like to hear from, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, or if there are any topics you'd like me to cover, please let me know. You can connect with me at heather at vacationrentalformula.com and I will make sure that we give due consideration, lots of consideration to your suggestions. And you will get a mention on the show as well. If you ask me to do something and we go ahead and do it, then I am going to attribute that to you. So let us hear from you. On that note, I'm away now and I'll see you again next week. Thanks again for listening to this episode brought to you by NoiseAware. And just a reminder, when you make your purchase with NoiseAware, use the promotional code VRFORMULA to receive 20% off. For more information and to connect with the NoiseAware team, visit vacationrentalformula.com forward slash NoiseAware. Or simply click the link in the description section of this episode on your smart device. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.